The Jell-O program, brought to you by Jell-O and Jell-O Puddings, coming to you from the Presidio in San Francisco, starring Jack Benny. With Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. The orchestra opens a program with the K-Sounds go rolling along. Never in all the 40 years or more that folks have been buying Jell-O has Jell-O tasted more delicious. And the reason? Jell-O's wonderful new locked-in flavor. By means of an exclusive Jell-O process, Jell-O's swell, tempting flavor is locked in to give you extra goodness, new delight, richer enjoyment. For Jell-O today is better than ever. Now that its tangy, tantalizing flavor is locked right into the tiny Jell-O particles, Jell-O offers you new high in pleasure. More than ever, its intriguing goodness brings to mind the grand, refreshing flavor of the juicy, ripe fruit itself. More than ever, Jell-O gives you real dessert delight. And all because of this new Jell-O process that locks in the magic of Jell-O's glorious flavor. You can prove for yourself that this delicious Jell-O flavor actually is locked in. Open a package of Jell-O. Notice there's no sweet, fruity odor, no telltale aroma to warn of escaping flavor. And then dissolve the Jell-O and notice how its marvelous captive goodness comes pouring out in a rich gush of fragrance and flavor. So ask your grocer tomorrow for several packages of Jell-O and discover for yourself how much better and richer Jell-O is now that its famous flavor is locked in. Songs go rolling along, played by the orchestra. And now, ladies and gentlemen, inasmuch as we are broadcasting from the U.S. Army Post at the Presidio in San Francisco, and this being the birthday of George Washington, it is only fitting that we bring you a man who fought heroically for that great general at Valley Forge, Jack Benny! <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Jello again, this is Jack Benny talking, and Don, that was the most ridiculous introduction I ever heard. Imagine saying that I fought at Valley Forge. Why, it's absurd. But Jack, you told me to mention your war record. I meant the World War. <laughs> the Battle of Valley Forge took place over 160 years ago. My goodness, that would make me older than Fred Allen. <laughs> Much. Now, wait a minute, Jack. Fred Allen is younger than you are, and you know it. What did you say, big boy? Uh, what did you say? I said Fred Allen is younger than you are That's a military secret And I'm going to tell the colonel on you <laughs> You heard him, fellas Allen younger than me I'd like to have muscles as hard as his arteries <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, uh, Don, it's uh, nice being up here in Frisco As they don't say <laughs> Isn't it, huh? Ah, yes, Jack, it certainly is. And by the way, Don, as long as I'm paying everybody's expenses on this trip, uh, may I inquire where you're stopping? Oh, uh, the little woman and I have a lovely suite at the Fairmont Hotel. Uh, a suite, eh? That's, uh, that's several rooms, isn't it? Huh? Uh, yes. You see, Jack, I'm a pretty big man, and when I take my belt off at night, I spread out. <laughs> I don't care if you overflow like a volcano, get into one room. <laughs> you don't need a suite. But Jack, Peggy and I have a lot of friends here in town, and we wanted a place where we could serve tea in the afternoon. Oh, tea, eh? Well, from now on, brother, your friends can lip their Liptons in the lobby. <laughs> get into one room. Huh? All I say is what's good enough for me is good enough for my cast. Well, perhaps you're right. By the way, Jack, uh, where are you stopping? Who, me? Oh, um... Oh, Dennis and I have a beautiful room at Ye Ocean Spray Auto Court. Uh, over at, in Alameda. It's a lovely place. It's run by a retired ferry boat captain. 
Well. In fact, that's what it is, an old ferry boat. Uh, we're living in what was formerly the poop deck. <laughs> of course, it's been redecorated, you know. Well, that sounds quite novel. Have you a private bath? Uh, what was that, Don? I said, have you a private bath? Well, there's a bolt on the door, if that's what you mean. <laughs> You, uh, you must, uh, come over sometime, Don, huh? Ye Ocean Spray Auto Court. Is that right on the ocean front? Uh, no, it's not exactly on the ocean. It's very nice, though. Well, can you see the ocean? No, you, you can't actually see it, Don. But when the west wind is blowing over those mud flats, you just know it's there. <laughs> and if the breeze is... Well, if it isn't Miss Livingston, uh, say hello to the soldiers, Mary. Hiya, boys. Let's hear some noise. Now, you asked for it, and you got it. I can't understand it, Mary, but every time we entertain the soldiers, you get a much bigger reception than I do. Why is that? I guess my legs are prettier than yours, huh, cutie? <laughs> Oh, I don't know about that, young lady. Now, I'll leave it to any... Oh, roll down your pants. Who cares? <laughs> well, you started it. By the way, Mary, as long as you're here, I want to settle something right now in front of Don Wilson and all the fellas here. Uh, who is older, Fred Allen or me? I don't see any insurance men chasing either one of you. <laughs> I can still get fire and theft, Smarty. <laughs> And anyhow, just because I have a few gray hairs doesn't mean I'm an old dodo. Doesn't mean you're cutting teeth, either. <laughs> well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Mary, because it so happens that I have a brand new tooth coming in. So there. Where's it coming in from, Sears and Roebuck? <laughs> no, it's not coming in from Sears and Roebuck. They don't even handle them. Oh, you checked on it, eh? <laughs> okay. Oh, let me tell you something else. The next one that mentions Fred Allen has to pay his own expenses in San Francisco. By the way, Mary, uh, where are you stopping? Oh, I have a lovely suite at the Sir Francis Drake. Hmm. Listen, Mary, you could very well have taken one room instead of two. I've got three. Yikes! <laughs> what do you need three rooms for? Well, I've got a lot of friends in town, and I have to have a place where I can serve tea in the afternoon. <laughs> tea, tea. Everybody giving tea parties. Funny thing, I'm never invited. But Jack, how can we reach you? Yeah, you haven't even got a telephone on that broken down ferry boat. You could wigwag, sister. <laughs> you could wigwag. You got the wig, how could we wag it? <laughs> I mean with flag. You may laugh at ye ocean spray auto court, Mary, but it's lovely there, isn't it, Dennis? I said, it's lovely there, isn't it, Dennis? Do you mind if I take a bow first, Mr. Benny? No, no, go right ahead. <laughs> yes, lovely there. What? Oh, oh, you mean the auto court. Yes, yes, it is. Hmm, what a kid. Well, Dennis, this is your first trip to San Francisco, isn't it? I suppose you've been sightseeing and everything. I'll say. I went to Seal Rocks in Chinatown and Twin Peaks in Chinatown and Fly Shacker Zoo in Chinatown and... What do you keep going back to Chinatown for? I left my hat there someplace. <laughs> Well, I, I hope you find it. Me too. Am I sick of chop suey? <laughs> Dennis, you, you don't have to eat every time you go there. Uh, what else did you do, Dennis? Well, now, let's see. Oh, yes, last night I went over to Treasure Island to see the World's Fair. <laughs> the, the World's Fair? Save your money, brother. It ain't much. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, there isn't any World's Fair. It's been closed for two years. Gee, I could swear I saw a fan dancer. <laughs> a fan dancer. You know, kid, I'd give $1,000 for your imagination. At your age, it's a bargain. <laughs> oh, sure. Well, Dennis, now that you're here, 
I think the boys would like to have you do a song. Uh, what's it going to be? I'm going to sing a brand new number called Private Buckaroo. Good. Let's have it, kid. Hold it a minute. Come in. Mr. Benny? Yes? On behalf of the officers and the men of the Presidio, I would like to present you with this regulation army uniform. Say, thanks. But it's awfully big for me. It, it's so large. Well, we thought you might want a place where you could serve tea in the afternoon. <laughs> Get, out of here. Hmm. Get a load of his head, fellas. There's a GI haircut if I ever saw it. A GI means government issue, folks. Sing, Dennis. Cowboy in the West, he was known as Slim. Now in the army, they've a new name for him. Private Buckaroo, we out on a range that he's a stranger to. Dreams he hears the cattle lowing, but it's just a bugle blowing. Blue private buckaroo. There in company Q, away from corrals and all the pals he knew. Won't be having any hand in this year's roping, this year's branding. Blue private buckaroo. Each night beneath the evening star, he strums on his old guitar. Till it's get along, buckaroo, you're in the arms. Sad and blue But there's nothing he's afraid of Got the stuff a cowboy's made of Through the rules So saddle up, lad, there's a roundup of a bear Get your lariat ready You've some two-legged doggies to snare. And we'll keep the campfires burning till the day that you're returning. Private Buckaroo sung for the first time on the air by Dennis Day. Swell, Dennis. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Say, Mr. Benny. What is it, kid? We sure had a lot of excitement at the Streets of Paris Cafe the other night, didn't we? <laughs> yes, yes. And now, ladies and gentlemen... But why did they throw you out? You didn't do anything. Uh, for, uh, forget it, kid. Forget it. And now, ladies and gentlemen... Wait a minute. I want to know what happened at the Streets of Paris the other night. Oh, there was a little argument, that's all. Dennis and I were out for an evening of fun, so we walked into this cafe with a couple of cute girls. Yeah, we followed them for miles. <laughs> we caught up with them at the bottom of the steps. Well, anyway, we, uh, we all went inside, and uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis asked for a glass of milk, and I ordered a lemon phosphate, at the streets of Paris? They sent out for us. <laughs> anyway, as we were sitting there with the girls, chatting and laughing, uh, 
a couple of great big guys walked over to us, and one of them said, uh, what are you two punks doing with our girls? So Dennis jumped up and said, uh, you want to make something out of it? Yeah. <laughs> you little rascal. <laughs> And the next thing I knew, I was laying out on Mason Street. <laughs> it, could, it could happen to anybody. Say, whatever became of you that night, Dennis? Oh, the boys got a girl for me, and we all went out. Oh, good, good, good. Hmm. Oh, hello, Phil. Hiya, Jackson. Hello, fellas. Were you worried about me? <laughs> Were you worried about me? There's the only Marcelled ham I ever saw. <laughs> well, Phil, here we are in San Francisco. The old town's as peppy as ever, isn't it? Yes, sir, and I'm sure getting a kick out of broadcasting for the soldiers here at the press of Tidio. <laughs> That's Presidio. Presidio. All right, how far did I miss it? <laughs> That's right, for you, that's a bullseye. <laughs> By the way, Phil, I'm doing a little checking up around here. Uh, where are you stopping in town? <laughs> well, I got a suite over at the Palace Hotel. You got a what? Well, here we go again. <laughs> you can sing that, sister. Listen, Harris, uh, Harris, what's the idea of getting a suite? Well, I got a lot of friends in town, and I need a place where I I know, can... I know, a place where you can serve tea. Tea, what's that? <laughs> Oh, uh, pardon me, you wouldn't know. Uh, a tea, Phil, is a beverage that you can serve up in your room all afternoon and no furniture will be broken. <laughs> Catch on? They took all the furniture out of my room, wise guy. <laughs> oh, yeah, just a carpet and a bucket of ice. That's Harris, huh? <laughs> hey, fellas, you want to hear something? This is the town where I started out 15 years ago on my musical career in the uh, old Rose Room at the St. Francis Hotel. At the Rose Room, huh? Yeah, and the only guy that's still with me is Frank Remley, my guitar player. No kidding. How come Frankie's been with you so long? Look, Jackson, if I had on you what he's got on me, I'd be the star of this show. <laughs> oh, ho, I always thought that guitar had a dictaphone in it. I <laughs> Well, let's have a band number, Phil, and show the boys here how you've improved in 15 years. Okay, Jackson. Wait a minute. Nobody's playing anything until I read my poem. Mary, what is this? Every time we visit a camp, you have to write a poem. That's right. Well, you're not going to read one today. I forbid it. Colonel Montanu said I could. Oh, he did, eh? Listen, Mary, who's running this post? Me or the... Uh-oh. What am I saying? <laughs> Gosh. Boy, are you gonna peel potatoes? <laughs> <laughs> well, Mary, if the Colonel wants to hear your poem, I'm only too happy to oblige him. Uh, uh, what's the title of it? I Like a Soldier. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, she, uh, she means I like a soldier boy. I know what I mean. Okay. <laughs> okay, read, uh, read your poem. <clears throat> I love soldiers, they're so gay, and they're charming, I might say. So give me a soldier any day, or any night, if he can get away. <laughs> hey, not bad. Continue. I went dancing at the Y, and I saw a handsome guy. I dropped my hanky trimmed with lace. He picked it up and wiped his face. <laughs> you, uh, you mean he passed you by? He passed me by without a glance. So I spoke to him and took a chance. Say, buddy, would you like to dance? I'd love to, miss, but I ripped my shirt. <laughs> but you ripped it? Yes. <laughs> Mary, that doesn't rhyme. <laughs> it rhymed at rehearsal. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's, um, that's a very good poem, Mary. Now, Phil, let's have a... Oh, wait a minute. Last verse, all out. Good. <laughs> If you listeners all could see these young men in front of me, you'd buy some bonds and buy some more and win the war with a great big score, the end. Well, Mary, 
Mary, that last verse really made sense, and I'm sure everybody will dig down and get those defense bonds. And incidentally, ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to announce that our program this evening is being short-waved by radio station KGEI to Alaska, Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand, to the United States fleet in the Pacific, to the American Expeditionary Force in Java, to General MacArthur and his men, and I do mean men, in the Philippines. <laughs> and also, also to the American volunteer flyers guarding the Burma Road. So go ahead with your number, Phil, and I don't have to tell you to play loud. You will anyway. <laughs> you played by Phil Harris and his Golden Gate Orchestra. Golden meaning golden notes pour forth from their instruments, and gate meaning they may soon get same. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Well, that's a fine thing to say after what we went through to get up here. <coughs> what do you mean? Well, me and the boys work at the Biltmore Bowl in Los Angeles. We worked there last night until 2 a.m., and then tired and weary, we got on a bus and started out for San Francisco. <laughs> Uh-huh. And 473 miles of tough driving across deserts and mountains. And then we went through rain and storm, little knowing what dangers lurked ahead of us. Danger? And when we arrived this morning hungry and thirsty and disheveled, our first thought was to rush over here and rehearse three hours for this broadcast. Gee. Can you imagine all that trouble just for one lousy number? <laughs> Yeah, don't seem right. Hungry, thirsty, and disheveled. Well, that's loyalty for you. Yeah, remind me, Phil, when we get back to Hollywood, I'll give the boys a bonus. They do look disheveled. Those guys look disheveled every week. <laughs> Come to think of it, they're thirsty every week, too. Forget that bonus, Phil. <laughs> and now, folks... You mean to say you're really going to give the hand out a bonus? Yes, I was going to hand out a bonus. <laughs> what are you laughing at? You wouldn't give a dog us a bonus. <laughs> Mary, one more crack is like that is, and a floor walker at the May Company will be your new straight man. <laughs> I wish you'd go to Sausalito. All right, Don, I wish Mary would go to Sausalito. Oh, Jack, this is the most ridiculous one yet. Don, I wish Mary would go to Sausalito. It's a nice little town across the bay. I know where it is, and I'm not going to do that silly commercial. Don, I'm warning you, Sausalito. Oh, very well. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you... No, no, I won't do it. Don Sausalito. Oh, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, the next time you go to your neighborhood grocer, why don't you ask him for a package of Jell-O? Jell-O is economical. In fact, you're never Sosa marvelous value for Sausalito sum of money. <laughs> There you are. Now get this clever switch, folks. Don, if Mary doesn't feel like going to Sausalito, she can go to Berkeley. This I won't do. Don, Mary can go to Berkeley. You can go to... Don! <laughs> Berkeley. Now go ahead. Oh, I'm hooked, I guess. Try Jell-O, folks. You will enjoy every one of those delicious flavors. Straw Berkeley, Raz Berkeley, Cherry, Orange, Lemon, and Lime Berkeley. 
Lime Berkeley, you ruined it. You ruined the cleverest commercial I ever wrote. I can't understand it. I can't understand it. You can't understand what? All these men under arms, and you haven't been shot yet. <laughs> what are you talking about? It was a brilliant piece of writing, wasn't it, Phil? Well, to tell you the truth, Jackson, I thought it was pretty corny. Oh, you did, eh? What'd you think of it, Dennis? Well, personally, I thought it was very... <laughs> very what? You have slugged me. <laughs> I will not. Hey, maybe you fellas didn't get the gag. Now look, Sausalito is a pun for such a little. So naturally, when Don said that... Wait a minute, I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny, this is Rochester. What do you want, Rochester? Say, boss, I think you ought to check into a hotel tonight. Why, what's the matter? You know that old ferry boat we've been living on? Yes? Well, the tide came in and it went out. <laughs> what? Why, that's impossible. That boat was on dry land. It had roses growing around the door. The barracuda's nibbled on them now. <laughs> well, I guess there's nothing we can do about it. I'll tell you what, Rochester. Bring my trunk and suitcases over here and I'll go to a hotel tonight. Uh-oh. What are you uh oh about? Don't tell me you left my trunk and everything in the boat. Don't tell me I didn't. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, boss, at the time of the unexpected launching... <laughs> yes? Due to no women and children, I got off first. <laughs> Imagine leaving my trunk and all my stuff on the boat. I bet you even left my washing hanging up on the mat. Yeah, you ought to see it, boss. The sun shining through your shorts is a vision of sheer beauty. <laughs> the heck with the beauty. I want my clothes. Now, let's see. There's no rowboat around there. I got it. Rochester, can you swim? What's that, boss? I said, can you swim? No, sir. You can, too. Not with a trunk on my back. I can read your mind. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, Rochester, I'll be through here pretty soon. Then when we, uh, we can rent a motorboat and go out and get it. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? After we get all straightened out, can I have the night off? Why, where are you going? Well, I got some friends in Oakland, and they invited me over for tea. Tea? Yeah, only we're going to break up the furniture. <laughs> I thought so. Well, all right, if we get through early enough. So long. So long, boss. Can you imagine anything like that? What's the matter, Mr. Benny? You know that ferry boat you and I were living on? Yeah. Well, your blue third suit will be passing the Bay Bridge any minute now. Play, Phil. And now for a new jello dessert that's really swell. Something different and something mighty delicious, too. It's a tempting new treat called Terry Cubes with Pineapple, a brilliant combination of golden canned pineapple and rich crimson jello cherry jello. Here's a clever Jell-O re receipt that is simply unrivaled for lovely shimmering color and delightful flavor. Yet it's one of the easiest desserts you ever made. All you have to do is dissolve a package of Jell-O imitation flavor and one pint of hot water and hot pineapple juice. Turn into a loaf pan and chill until firm. Then cut into cubes and pile in sherbet glasses along with three slices of canned pineapple diced. The result will be a grand treat, a dessert that the whole family will love. Golden nuggets of canned pineapple deliciously blended with tiny glistening cubes of bright red cherry jello. So get a package of cherry jello tomorrow and make up this gay, colorful treat. Just remember when you buy to be sure to get genuine jello because jello's locked in flavor gives you extra richness. We're a little late, so good night, folks. Friends, every time you order Jell-O from your grocer, ask him for Jell-O puddings in all three flavors, chocolate, vanilla, and butterscotch. There's Jell-O vanilla pudding, gloriously creamy and full of rich, homemade flavor that makes every spoonful a mellow delight. This program came to you from Hollywood. This is the National Broadcasting Company. KFI Los Angeles. Use seal coat liquid nail protector. Seal coat protects nails and aid to longer nails. Seal coat protects polish from chips and mars. Seal Coat adds luster to polish, 25 cents. Seal Coat your nails today and every day.